Greetings everybody, Nick DiVirgilio here, and today's video is tips for recording vocals at home. Recording at home is so easy these days. If you're just getting started making music, you're getting started at a great time because there's so many gear options that will get you very good sounding and high quality recordings. If budget is an issue, there's lots of great gear out there for you. If budget is no issue, there's lots of amazing gear out there for you as well. This video is aimed at those of you who are in the early stages of figuring all this stuff out. But even if you've been making music in your own space for a while now, hopefully there are things in this video that you will find useful and help you make your recordings easier and better. We're gonna talk gear, your recording environment, and some ways to make all of that work for you no matter what you have to work with. Now, before we dive in, I think it's a good time to let you know that in the description below, there's going to be links for all the gear I talk about today and the gear I'm using. Click on the links to go right to the product pages. I also recommend that you reach out to your Sweetwater sales engineer if you want even more information and options. Those folks on our sales floor have so much knowledge about the gear and will work with you to get you exactly what you need. So, okay, let's jump in. Let's first talk about your room where you're recording at and what does it sound like in that room. Take some time to stand not only where you're going to be recording at and where your speakers are, but walk around the room and listen to what the room sounds like. Clap your hands and see if you hear any fluttering sound. If you do hear those fluttering sounds or delays, it's something you're going to want to take care of and there's many ways to do that. Does your room have a lively sound or a very dry sound? Since this video is focusing on recording vocals, a dry sounding room is better than a very live sounding room. Let's talk about ways to dampen up that live sounding room if that's what you have to deal with. If your room is really big, this will be a little bit harder, but let's assume you have a normal bedroom sized room. You could use things like blankets on the walls, pillows, or anything like that that will help suck up the sound waves that are floating around and help dry out your room. Carpet on the floor definitely helps. Back in my early days of recording, I had to play in a garage. I had area rugs on the floor and egg cartons all over the metal garage door. It sounds funny, I know, but it did work. I got a lot of those square cardboard egg cartons and covered the whole door. It took away the metallic sound that was bouncing off of that door and helped quiet it all down a bit. And it was all I could afford at the time. Now, if you want something that looks a little bit better than egg cartons and packing blankets, you could reach out to your Sweetwater sales engineer and ask them about the huge selection of sound absorption products we have here. Companies like Auralex and Prime Acoustics make all kinds of products that absorb and diffuse the sound, from single pieces to bundles, and there's different colors to choose from as well. You can not only make your room sound good, you can make it look pretty cool too. If outfitting your whole room with sound absorption and diffusers is not really an option for you, there are other things you could do as well. Products like the SE Reflection Filter. It's this piece I have right there. It's a really cool piece. It's a great product to use around your microphone and it helps keep out some of the outside sounds away from the microphone. There's also portable vocal boost that you could purchase here at Sweetwater. Full vocal boost that surround you from companies like Clear Sonic and Sound Shields to a very cool home vocal booth from a company called Isovox that isolates just your head. It's a pretty cool product. All of those products are in the description below. In the room I'm at right now, this is called the Red Room, and it's one of our conference room slash video rooms we have here at Sweetwater. Now, it's not the ideal place to record, but it does have a little bit of sound absorption on the walls, some Oralex products. It's pretty dead because they covered the ceiling and there's carpet on the floor, so it's pretty dry and I can record through this SM7B and I'll get a nice dry sound into Pro Tools here. I won't need the reflection filter in this room. There's not a lot of bouncing waves going around, so it's pretty maintained in a good way for a little bit of recording in this room. This is exactly what you would do in your place. So now that you've taken the time to get your room in a little better shape and you have a dry space to record in, let's talk about the rest of the gear the recording gear, and the microphones. There are so many choices, and if you don't work in the music business like I do every day, it can be really overwhelming. Well, one thing I can say about that is after you've done a little bit of research and you talk to your Sweetwater sales engineer, you'll be on a way better footing to dive right in. And once you get past the what do you buy point, you'll see quickly how much fun making music can be. The first thing to do is to pick your favorite software, the DAW, the D-A-W. I use Pro Tools most of the time, but there are many others and they all work relatively the same way. Next, get yourself a good recording interface. This is what gets the sound into the computer and the goal is an interface that gives you a nice, clean recording. 
Today, I'm using the Focusrite Scarlett 18i8. There are recording interfaces out there to fit any budget. It also depends on how many inputs you need. Do you want to record a full band or just a vocal and maybe a guitar here or there? Two inputs may be plenty for your situation. Another thing to consider is if your interface comes with its own DSP, which is digital signal processing. All that means is if your interface does have DSP, you'll be able to record through effects like EQ, compression, delays, and reverbs directly inside of the interface software before the signal gets to your computer. Some great interface options with DSP are any of the UA Apollo pieces, the Motu Ultralight, and the RME Fireface 802. There are ways to record with effects with an interface that does not have DSP, which a lot of people have, and I will show you how to do that here in just a minute. Another way to record your vocals that should not be glossed over is through real hardware pieces. Recording through software and plugins is, of course, very convenient for home recording, but if you go into a recording studio, you're going to be recording through hardware, a mic pre, into an EQ, and then maybe through a compressor, and then into your computer. You can easily do this at home, and you don't have to clean out your bank account to do it necessarily either. There's hardware pieces that will fit any budget as well, and you will get true analog sound going into your computer. For some, that can make all the difference in the world. There's links in the description below to some very nice hardware channel strips. I encourage you to check them all out. Next is the all-important microphone. Many times in recording studios, you're going to sing through a condenser microphone. Condenser mics are sensitive and great for many, many things. There's lots of options in many price ranges, from the Neumann U87, which I have right there, to the Warm Audio 47, just to name a couple. But again, there are a lot. You can also sing through dynamic microphones in the studio as well. It's not done as often, but the microphone I'm talking through right now, this Shure SM7B, is a famous dynamic microphone that's been used by some of the biggest artists in the world in their recordings. It has a nice clean sound. It doesn't need phantom power, which condenser mics do need. It can be used on all kinds of things and it just works. Another cool dynamic mic to mention is the Earthworks SR314. There's also some great modeling microphones out there. These are microphones that digitally emulate some of the most famous microphones ever made. The UA Sphere or the Slate Digital VMS are very cool options. Again, don't let all this talk of gear scare you. Do a little research, pick the pieces you need, and start making music. Now before we end this video, I'd like to take just a few minutes to show you how I would record a vocal through this Focusrite Scarlett 18i8 interface. I've got a channel set up here in Pro Tools and the microphone routed through channel 1 of the Focusrite and all of the interfaces that are out there these days have direct monitoring. What that means is I'm listening to the sound of the microphone directly through the interface before it goes into the computer and like around the computer and back out. So there's no latency. If I turn up the fader here in Pro Tools, listen to this sound. You're going to hear what latency is. Check, check, one, two, one, two. My voice becomes a little chorus and a little funky sounding. This is not what I want to sing to. It's not going to be uh, inspiring when I want to sing a song to hear that sound. And if you're recording someone else, if you're the engineer and they hear that sound, they're not going to be very happy either. So you can either just do the recording with the fader down and direct monitor through the interface, or you could add some reverb to the send here, and you'll basically mask the latency and make it a lot more inspiring for the vocalist to do. So all you have to do here in Pro Tools is go up here on the, inner, on the insert, and let's just put a reverb in real quick. I'm going to use the basic uh, Pro Tools reverb called D-verb. And now when I turn up the fader, you'll hear the reverb. Check, check, one, two, one, two but you're not gonna hear that horrible latency sound. Now all you have to do is adjust the reverb to taste. You, want, you probably not wanna, you're not gonna wanna have a ton of reverb, just enough to be inspiring to who, who's ever singing. And then go for it. So if I just put this in record, it's not gonna record the reverb, it's just gonna record the dry signal. So let's do this real quick here. La 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 yeah. <laughs> so one thing, when you play back the track, it'll be playing back with the reverb. So if you don't want to hear the reverb, just bypass the effect. So let's do that real quick. Check it out. La 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 yeah. Now I wanted to show you what it sounded like with the verb 
in to mask the latency, but I also want to play back that vocal with no reverb and just listen how clean this SM7B sounds going through the focus right. This is a nice, very usable, workable vocal sound. La 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, well that's not the greatest vocal performance ever created, but it's a nice clean sound through an SM7B into this focus right interface. And if you're new to making music and new to recording vocals at, by yourself or recording somebody at your place, what you're really looking for is just a nice, clean signal that you can mess with later on when you mix. That's when you're going to add compression and EQ and effects and all kinds of stuff. If the sound is clean at the beginning, you're good to go. Another way to record with reverb that's really easy is to put the reverb on a send. It's really easy to do in Pro Tools, but your DAW will work in a similar fashion. What I do here in Pro Tools is I go up to Track, I hit New, and I want to make an aux track. So I put this in stereo, I say aux, and hit create, and you'll see it right here. Aux tracks in Pro Tools are usually green. Then, in the track that I'm recording on, I want to send that through a bus, say 1 and 2, to this aux track. So the input of the aux track has to be bus 1 and 2, and you're good there. Turn this up and put it on pre. pre. Now you could see that the aux track is getting signal as well. I do have the faders down so we don't have to listen to the latency at, the mo at this very moment. So now I'm going to turn up the fader of the track. You're going to hear that latency. We don't want to hear that sound. But when I turn up the fader of the aux track where the reverb is inserted, you start hearing that. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Now adjust it like you would before. One, one, pick your favorite sound, ambient, nonlinear, all kinds of different things and have fun and now your your vocalist whether it's you or wh whoever you're recording will be more inspired <laughs> that's a really long reverb let's turn that down a little bit <laughs> we'll be really inspired to give a great vocal performance now you might be saying to yourself nick what if i want to record with the effects print the effects well i applaud you for committing to that sound because most of the time you're going to get a clean recording and then add all that kind of stuff after the fact when you mix but it's been done before and if you want to get inspired by some kind of crazy sound, distortion, delay, or something on your voice, and you want to record with that and commit that to the tape, to the computer, it can be done, and it's pretty easy. Here in Pro Tools, I still have my main recording track right here, my aux track, which I just showed you a second ago, but then I added in another stereo audio track. This time, I'm going to feed the aux track to that new audio track. I sent the aux track out of bus three and four, the input of the new audio track to bus three and four, so it sees the same thing. And now, when I put the effect on the aux track, it will get recorded to the new audio track. So, I have a really cool effect in here, a plugin called Fission. It's a really fun delay plugin from Eventide, and you get lots of fun sounds. So, let's put up these faders. Check, check, one, two. Here we go. Now, when I put up the fader of the audio track, you're going to hear the delay. Oh, that one's cool. That one's pretty tame. Let's pick a, let's pick a weird one. This one is called Wide Modulations. Hey, hey, hey. Check, one, two. That one's getting weird. Hello. Check, one, two. Hello, hello. Check, one, two. Oh, yeah. Now, let's record my voice with that funky delay sound on it and play it back so you can hear that it actually works. Here we go. Now, check it out. When I play that track back, you'll have the effect with the main sound coupled together. And they're committed. You made a commitment, which is really cool. Check it out. It was really as simple as that. So you can record through effects, through reverb, with an interface that does not have DSP. If you have DSP, it's a little bit easier because those things are inside the hardware, inside the interface. But if you don't, you could easily just make a couple of tracks in your DAW and do the exact same thing. 
And there you go, everybody. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it useful. Make sure to check out the links to the gear in the description below and reach out to your Sweetwater sales engineer with any questions and keep on making music. It's a wonderful thing. I'm Nick DiVirgilio. Thank you.